David Burris at Clear and Forge, and today I'm going to try to get you hooked on blacksmithing. Uh, we're going to be making three styles of hooks. Uh, one thing people wonder when they're just getting started is where do you get the raw materials to do this with? Well, scrap yards uh, are a good source. The nice thing about blacksmithing is we can use pieces that have been discarded from other shops and industries as being too small and we can still make something useful and beautiful out of them. Uh, if there's a fabrication shop or a welder in your area, make friends with him, see if you can go through his scrap bin or else when he's getting ready to put in an order, see if you can throw in and order a couple of pieces with him. Uh, there's steel suppliers all over the country, so just uh, make a search and, and find your resource and you know, get the best deal you can. Uh, one thing I tell people when we start shaping iron, if you've never done this before, when you get steel really hot, it moves like a really stiff clay. So if you've ever uh, dealt with modeling clay or, or clay, the way you, you stretch it out, or what the process is called drawing out in blacksmithing, is you create pinch points. And we're, whereas with clay, if you pinch it between your finger and thumb, you can move the clay forward and make it longer. At the anvil, of course, this is too hot and too stiff, we have to create the pinch point between the hammer and the anvil. So that's what we're going to be doing. First thing I'm going to do is make this a little bit shorter. Uh, the way I'm going to do that is at the anvil here, I'm going to use a tool called a hardy. <clears throat> it's like a little stubby chisel that fits in the hole, which is aptly named the hardy hole on the anvil. And uh, I'm going to take them six inches. Cut that most of the way through, and I can break it off. Now these are what we call bolt tongs, because they've got a space here. If you were working on something like a bolt, you can still hold your piece of metal straight. It also helps if you've got a, a piece you've already got a curve in, which you'll see when we get the hook done here in a little while. Uh, that's real handy to have those. First type of hook we're going to make is called a drive hook. It's a, a hook like you would hang on the wall to hang your backpack or hang something in the kitchen on, but it's got its own built-in nail. So <clears throat> I'm going to get the, the iron hot here, and the first process we're going to do is drawing out. It's like I was talking about the clay. We're going to pinch this material out into a sharp point. tough material and you can't tickle it into shape, you have to get rough with it. Alright, so there I've drawn it into a point and that's going to be my nail head on that end. Uh, <clears throat> I'm using a about a three pound hammer and uh, you might think that's a lot of hammer for that small of a piece of stock but it's been my experience that the heavier the hammer you use the less work you have to do with your arm and shoulder because the anvil if you've got a good anvil it bounces the hammer back up so you get some relief uh, you're not lifting the whole weight of the hammer all the way up every time while that's heating back up that reminds me of another point is the height of your anvil. When you stand beside your anvil with your feet apart like you, you're braced for work, make a loose fist and your knuckles should just brush the top of your anvil. 
And that's really important because if your anvil's too high, then all the force of the blow is going right to your elbow, and that's really going to cause some tendonitis problems if you work like that over a long period of time. If it's too low and you overextend, it's all about protecting that elbow joint because if you want to be a blacksmith for a very long time, you're going to have to take care of your human machine. Alright, I'm going to bend this 90 degrees now to form the nail. I just bend it right over the edge of the anvil. my nail. I'm going to form the hook on the other end now. Um, just a word about anvils. <clears throat> the uh, way to test an anvil when you're going to buy one is take a hammer with you and make sure it's sitting on the floor or on something fairly solid where you can drop your hammer and see how far it bounces back. That's what we, we refer to as the life of the anvil. Uh, an anvil that the hammer just lands on and it absorbs the blow, or if it has a really dull ring, then there's probably a, a problem with that anvil, like a crack somewhere that you might not see, or else it's mostly cast iron, which is not desirable. Uh, there's a lot of cast iron anvils out there, but they're really uh, what people in the craft refer to as ASOs, anvil-shaped objects. They're uh, really not meant to be worked on. Um, this anvil is a, the best I can tell, is a Foster, which was made about 1840. Uh, it's a double horn, which is handy for a lot of different processes. I'm just drawing the other end out, just like I did the nail. Starting back here and pushing that material forward. All the way out to the tip. Now when you get out here where it's getting pinched down small, you don't have to hit it as hard. You kind of got to gauge your blows for the thickness of the metal. And when do you know when to stop hammering? Well, when it loses its color and it begins to feel stiff under the hammer, go ahead and stop because if you hammer a piece too cold you can work hard on it and cause it to crack. Um, so I've got that drawn out. What I'm going to do different on this than the nail is I'm going to, I always draw it out square because it's easier to maintain and see you know how your metal's moving and but to do that you work one side and rotate it 90 degrees and work that side the anvil squaring off the other two sides. <clears throat> but I'm going to heat it up and I'm going to hammer it on these diagonals and round it back out so that we've got a nice round transition into the hook. Just as you take a piece of clay and roll it between your hands to make a long, thin piece, you can essentially do the same thing between the hammer and amp. So you notice I'm just rolling this back and forth and keeping the hammer blows going up and down it. rounded it back out. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little delicate curl on the end so that when we form the hook on this it's 
it's not going to be something that'll poke through a jacket if you hang it on. Uh, so we're going to make a little decorative curl on the end and then we'll bend the hook and we'll quench it and we'll be done. It doesn't take this very long to heat up if we've got it thinned down properly. Alright, I'm going to stick just a eighth of an inch or so over the edge of the anvil and just with a almost a brushing stroke just start brushing that curl down and roll it the other way and tap it back on itself raising the, the rod to make sure the metal's going where I want it to go and there's our little curl. Now before I stick this back in the fire to heat the portion up that's going to form the, the belly of our hook I'm going to quench this because this is so thin now if I just stick it back in the fire, chances are this would completely burn up before this gets hot enough to work with. So by quenching the tip, that's going to take that just long enough to heat back up that I can get the middle part hot before it burns up. And then when it comes out of the fire, we'll quench it again so that I can hammer on it without distorting it.